Great, so we're chatting here again today to Professor Colin Moore, who's a trained paediatric surgeon and a cosmetic surgeon. He's known for his contribution to the field, to the field of penis enlargements, um, also known as phalloplasty. Um, about, um, we're going to talk to him today about modern day hormone injections that are available to young boys that are having what's known as a micropenis, um, specifically designed to increase the size of their penis. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us again. You're welcome, Josh. So just um, a question for our, well, sorry, just mm. some answers for our, our readers. Mm. Mm. How many young boys have you seen um, for uh, small penises that are brought in by their concerned parents over well, the years? <clears throat> over the years, many hundreds. Um, at the present start time, I probably see four or five a year. <clears throat> this is, there's two groups. There's patients with true micro penises, which, are, which is a fairly rare event. Technically, this is a penis that is small in infancy and does not respond to hormone stimulation. In fact, that's the diagnostic test par excellence. You've got a small willy, a wee willy, if you like. We inject it with, um, uh, with uh, testosterone in a small dose, uh, and if it responds, then it's not a micro penis. Now, there are many kids who are just a bit beyond the micropenis size, nonetheless small, or their penis is buried in a big fat pad. These ones will respond to hormone injections. And essentially what we're doing is we're stealing a little bit of the growth that would occur at puberty. And we used to think that uh, that would be lost at the next growth at puberty, but we now know but what in fact we're doing is shifting the baseline so that if um, this small penis was subjected to puberty and we look along the growth curves that it would be X length, we take some of that with the hormones as an, in infancy and it's added on at the other end. So they do in fact have a bigger phallus after puberty than they would okay. otherwise have had. Right. Uh, they sometimes need three courses. <clears throat> And each course is over three months. Mm -hmm. And I like to leave um, a, 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 at least six months between the courses. So we do better the younger we get them, but you can still have a crack at it as they're, they're approaching puberty. And the doses are well described and the regimes are well described and it's well established in paediatric surgical practice. Okay. And do you think it's okay for parents to make the decision on behalf of their um, sons to give them hormone treatment in order to increase the size of their penis um, when they're older? <clears throat> I absolutely do. Uh, most parents make well-intended decisions about their children, mm -hmm. but the penis, and particularly the penis size, is such an important part of the male psyche. If you try to do this after puberty, it doesn't work. So it's got to be done while the child is legally and technically an infant. It's got to be done pre-puberty and it's got to be done a year or so before puberty mm -hmm. to, to produce a result. Yep. So yes, I think they, they do have the right and they should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you actually said that um, I was going to ask you how many injections are necessary to um, the treat the small penis and how quickly can you see the results? Well, you'll usually see a, a result after the first injection. We do them at monthly intervals. So they come in, I measure them, photograph them, they get their first injection. <clears throat> now, this is an injection into muscle somewhere on the body. Mm -hmm. Then they go away and we let the, the, the hormone, which is a depot testosterone type um, injection, uh, and they come back at a month. Now... If we're going to get a response, we'll get some response in that month, but it's a progressive and incremental response. Right. So you repeat the dose at one month, again at two months, and the course may be three or maybe four months. Okay. <clears throat> and you then measure that and you send them away for, for six months, they come back, uh, and if the size is satisfactory and the parents think it's okay, then that's all we do. But if they still think that it's a bit small, then we can run a second and even a third course if we okay. have to. Okay, okay. And so it's not actually injected into the penis, it's injected intramuscular? There's two ways of delivering it. Mm -hmm. You can do testosterone creams which you actually rub into the penis. Okay. This is an uncontrolled dose um, and 
we used to see pubic hair in some of the kids okay. with this cream. Sure. <clears throat> and it doesn't go away, which is mm-hmm. the distressing part. So we've mostly switched over to injections. Mm-hmm. We can control the dose. Mm-hmm. And seeing them every month, the first sign of pubic hair, you back off. Yeah. Cut okay. your dose back. Okay, right. The other thing you sometimes see is a bit of aggression. Um, which is a precursor of what's going to happen at puberty. Yeah, sure, sure. So it's the testosterone Mm. effect. Yeah. Okay. And in previous years, hormone injections, although um, shown to have some contribution towards increased um, penis size, they were were identified as not being able to um, restore an average size um, penis in the recipient. So how has the hormone treatment changed um, or become more effective today? um, And does it give results in all boys um, who want to take the treatment? I've been using this technique <clears throat> and in both in its current form and its precursor form since oh, the late 1960s. Um, the early failures uh, were because people were not using enough. They were terrified that they were going to close bone ends too soon because all the growth, the longitudinal growth in bones occurs around the big joints. And there are plates you can identify in the bones called growth end plates. And these are the things that close off Mm -hmm. puberty, which determines your height. And the fear was that we would close them off early. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not proved to be correct if you stay within the range of doses that we use. Okay, right, right. And so you really got to go to someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. The the path you're going to go down. Mm. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. And if you, if you're, um, if this is a problem that's um, in in your family, you're looking for um, a practitioner, you can jump onto our website. Um, you can contact uh, Professor Moore himself, or you can just send us an email to info at plasticsurgeryhub.com.au. Thank you. Thanks, Trish.